up in the football, and we're going to start with the biggest college rivalry game in college football history. Still the biggest rivalry game for all these years. It's the Army Navy game. It's so big, they give it its own weekend. Both teams come in five and six. Does the six win matter for either team? Because like six win makes you bowl win. That, that's what I was wondering. I, I'm just learning that that matters, but you can be snubbed from the college football playoffs for no reason. And it, I don't think either team's going to a bowl game. They might be. I, di I didn't look at all the bowls yet, but it doesn't matter. This is one of those games... Like the this it's is pride. their Super Bowl. It's pro. It's a. It's this a, is the game of the year for both teams. Talking shit for the whole ye next year. This is Army Navy. Army, Army has won five out of seven in this rivalry, which is a good run for them because before that, fourteen straight wins for Navy. Yeah, Army. Um, their quarterback. What is his name? It's uh, Bryson Daly. He's obviously their leading passer, but he's also their leading rusher. Yeah, Army does not pass the ball. Neither, kinda, team, neither of these teams pass the ball. It's going to be a running game. Yeah, dude, I was looking online, uh, kind of doing my research for everything, and they said this was abysmal offenses for both teams. You know, just, just not great football teams. You know, as far as, like, college football, you know, the scale of college football is concerned. But uh, Bryson Daly is the leading rusher. It looks like they've had like a carousel starting quarterbacks for Navy so far, but it looks like a tie. I don't know how to say his name. Lavante. Lavante is one of the, um, sounds Hawaiian, starter for Navy. Like I said, both, seas both teams have had poor offenses throughout the season. It's an over under of 28 points. Who do you think is going to win the game? I think it's going to be a close game as usual. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. The game it, is in Foxborough. It's always at a neutral site. Do you I think have, the under is going to hit? What's the what's the over-under? Over-under 28. It's very possible. That's crazy. I'm thinking like a 17-10 game. I got Army winning the game. I think they figure out a way to edge out Navy. I think they continue their good fortune in this. I got the Army Black Knights beating the midshipmen of Navy. I think the Black Knights... I agree. I think... I think the Black Knights are going to edge the Seamen. All right. So now we're going to move on to the NFL after we covered the one college football game of the week. First game we're going to look at, NFC North matchup, the 9-3 and three Detroit Lions heading to Chicago, the 4-8 and eight Bears. Lions come in minus three favorites at, in Chicago. Yeah, I guess that's, that's just because divisional games are always tough. You're going to play... You know, to your your rivals. Well, the Lions, they're a team. They're nine and three, but like, they've had some stinkers out there. Like, they could easily lose this game. So I think that's part of it. They're kind of unpredictable how they're going to play. They are. They, they've they've come a long way since last season, where they were kind of a surprise good team. They've been an, another surprise good team this season, but a more consistent surprise. You know, uh, kind of a almost we could lean on them all season. But it, I mean, they're one of the best teams in the NFC, nine and three record. And both teams coming off of a win. But I think the Lions go into Chicago. I think the Lions get a dub. I agree. I think the Lions win. Uh, they're fifth in points scored in the entire NFL. That obviously leads you know, to their 9-3 and three record. But it doesn't go to say that their defense is just allowing anybody to score on them. They've done a lot to you know, maintain the points scored against them. Middling in that column. But with how good their offense has been at times... You know, they've been able to win. I agree. I think the Lions are going to win. And I think, you know, they're going to move to 10 and 3 for what it, well, that'll probably be the first time ever. Not ever. Pretty close. In a long time. So now let's move to the next game. It's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars, 8 and 4, the NFC South leaders, heading to Cleveland to take on the 7 and 5 Browns. Browns come in minus two favorites. Big question is Trevor Lawrence going to be ready to play in this game? High ankle, sp high ankle sprain. Questionable. Yeah, look, the Bengals as of this point. The Bengals with Jake Browning, is that his name? Correct. They were able to beat the Jaguars. I'll say because Trevor Lawrence wasn't able to come back. You know, if Trevor Lawrence is on the field, I think well, I mean, he's questionable. There's a very good chance he plays in this game. Well, I'm saying I think if Trevor Lawrence was able to have come back and played against you know the rest of the game against the Bengals, I think there's a good chance the Bengals would have lost that game being on the backup. But if you go to a backup backup situation like you could go to with the... Browning played his ass off last night, though. He did. 
You go to a backup backup situation with the Jaguars and the Browns? I don't know. High ankle sprain, Trevor Lawrence being questionable. I don't think he's the Aaron Rodgers type, you know, or the Patrick Mahomes type where he suits up next week. They need him to kind of rest and be as close to possible as as he can. Christian Kirk's also out. He has to have uh, core surgery. He tore his core in a non-contact pass yesterday, which is brutal. Um, so he has to have surgery. So they're down bad. This might just be the end of their season. You know, with, with not even close. They're eight and four, in the leading a shitty division. Yeah, but that's not. That doesn't mean they're going to win a Super season, Bowl. End of their season, he's might play. Their quarterback. Might I don't play think this he's going to play. I what don't we, think he's going to play. College football playoff committee just. Fuck you, your quarterback's kind of hurt. <laughs> yep, clip him. He's done. Clip, you got to clip them all. They're so done. So you're picking the Browns in this? I think that's a long, like how, how long does it take you to say you're picking the Browns? I, and with Flacco getting the nod, I pick the Browns. I'm picking the Jags. I think they come in and get the dub. I believe in the Jaguars. Best team in the NFC South. Speaking of the NFC South, let's move on to the next game. The other best team in the NFC South, fuck the Indianapolis Colts, is the Houston Texans. Six and a half point favorites at the New York Jets. Texans come in seven and five. Jets four and eight. Jets have lost five straight. Jets in four and eight. That's impressively bad. Texans have won four out of five, including their last game over the streaking Denver Broncos. I mean, I think the Texans are just going to be too much for the Jets to handle. Jets have a great defense. But no who's starting for the quarterback? They said they wanted to start uh, Zach Wilson again. He was reluctant. <laughs> reluctant? To, like, how bad were Zach Wilson's? Like, nah, fuck this. Okay, so listen, you got to hear me out on that. If you're the, if you're list, you're healthy, right? You're listed as the backup to Aaron Rodgers coming into the season. You're losing to the Bills. They're not a bad team. They beat the Bills first game of the year. Right, but I'm saying like this past week, you're losing to the Bills, 32 to six, or they lost to the Bills, 32 to six, right? No, this past week they lost to the Atlanta Falcons, 13 to eight. Jeez, I didn't, I forgot about that one. You're right. So, if you're asking, you're you're benching Zach Wilson for as the emergency third. He's inactive. He's the emergency quarterback, and there's two guys in front of him, and then you're asking him to come in. I'm good. You can have this shit show. No, because that kind of kills. Like if you he's used to go done in, that, in the, your that squad anyway. Nah, it's still a bad look. It's a bad look. He he had redeeming qualities at the beginning of the season, but I think he's kind of done with that whole system. Just in his mind, I'm I think sure he's done in the NFL. <laughs> I'm in his mind. I'm sure he feels like he's being used. But that's kind of what a quarterback has to do sometimes is come in. He's doing his, literally his, his job. daily job. Like, shut the fuck up and go out there and play. Yeah, you're getting paid millions of dollars to go out there and have fun or lose. Whatever. Yes, yeah, so I, I got the Texans. The Texans are going <laughs> to win as well. Yeah. All right, next game. Another streaking team. Team that's won three in a row, the Los Angeles Rams. Back into the playoff conversation. Six and six. Going into quietly the most impressive team this year nobody's even talking about them the nine and three ravens yeah the rams i looked it up today they are middling in almost every category yeah but the last three record. weeks they've the last two weeks they've dominated last two weeks barely they beat seattle then the last two weeks they've dominated a bad team so we'll see how they do 13th Th- in points scored and 14th in points allowed so hey, it's about winning games right ravens as we said, nine and three, seven point favorites. They've won four out of five, two in a row. Can the Ravens continue it? Get their tenth win in a row. I think Try so. To lock up and take a hold of that uh, first round bye in the AFC. I think they do. I think the Ravens get the dub. Sixty-eight point three percent is Lamar Jackson's uh, completion ratio. That's the highest he's been as a starter or in his career in the NFL. I think that. You know, him running less. He's lost the ball a little bit more, you know, running this season. But he's been more efficient. They have more points per game. I think the Ravens win the, the, win the game. I think you're right. Next is going to be the Vikings. Also 6-6. Six and six. Probably the worst game we're going to cover this week. Versus the Raiders 5-7. and seven. And honestly, the only reason we're covering it is because there's no more college football to cover. Raiders 2.5 point favorites at home. The we Vikings, have Josh Dobbs versus Aiden McDowell. Josh Dobbs' stock dropped so much after the 12 to 10 losses. The, the Alopecia Bears King turned into Jada Pinkett Smith. 
and I couldn't care any less. He threw four interceptions last week. And the Raiders last week jumped up 14 out. Not last week. Their last game. So two weeks ago. Right. They had a Against bye. the Chiefs. They jumped up 14-0. Everybody's like, what the fuck's wrong with the Chiefs? Chiefs ended up winning that game 31-17. Where's this Raider team go? We don't know. They've lost two in a row. Uh, I, like I think it's going to be an interesting that's game. Solid. Who? I said I like your rhymes. That's solid. I didn't even know I rhymed. Good Thank job. You. I think the Raiders figure it out. I think these are both teams that they're not going to do anything. I don't think either one's a playoff team. I think simply because the Raiders are at home, Vikings have a meddling offense. I think the Raiders figure out a way to get it done. Close game. Taking Vegas. I would. I would agree with you. If not for the fact that Justin Jefferson was intentionally activated off of injury reserve, they had a chance to do it before the bye, but they wanted him to be 100%. They didn't want him to play unless he was, you know, Yeah, absolutely I don't know if Josh ready. Jobs is good enough to but at least where an a pro elite receiver is even at, meaningful. At the very least, yeah, we've kind of proven with Aiden McDowell that Devontae Adams is more or less useless, right? I mean, it wasn't. He wasn't the start of the whole year. Garoppolo is who's really to blame for that. Yeah, but just kind of a whole mix with the Raiders just being a shit show. I think at the very least this week with Justin Jefferson, at least there's a target share that gives him an opportunity to catch the ball. With that, I think the Vikings win the game. So we're different on that one. So let's move on to the next one, the NFC West matchup. The best team in the NFL, the 9-3, and three, maybe not best record, but best team in the NFL, the 9-3 and three, 49ers host their division rival, the 6-6 six and six Seahawks, 49ers, 10.5-point favorites at home. And we've said it before, when the 49ers are healthy, they are the best team in the NFL. I mean, they the proved NFL. it last week. They beat the shit out of the Eagles in Philadelphia. Yeah, Tush Push couldn't do shit against them. There was nothing to stop. Four the- straight wins for the Niners. I mean, After some questionable losses. Well, they started off 5-0. and Right. Lost three in a row. They had a lot of injuries during that time, but lost three in a row. Had a bye week since then, won four in a row. I think they figured it out. I think this is clearing away the best team in the NFL, and they're taking on a Seahawks team who's lost three in a row. Right. Seattle has the ability to, to score, but their defense allows points. And just two weeks ago, the 49ers beat the shit out of them in Seattle. Yeah. On Thanksgiving Day. The close the close proximity to matchups with, you know. I think the close proximity honestly helps the Seahawks. I don't think the Niners are going to come in and blow them out quite like they did. That's no, but it's going to be a good game for the 49ers to, to kind of flex that the team I is don't fully think they healthy. cover two and a half point, two, ten and a half points. I was going to say two and a half. I wow. think the Niners win probably by like a touchdown, like eight or nine points. But I got the Niners winning the game. I also have the Niners winning the game. I think it won't be an an easy victory, but I think it'll be, you know, a, a touchdown. All right. So let's move on to the next game, which at the beginning of the season, if you were to point at the most exciting, biggest game of the year, I think a lot of people, this would be a strong candidate for that game. But it turns out both teams not doing as well as we thought. Chiefs eight and four, they're still doing enough to make the playoffs. Taking on the six and six Bills, who have been the most disappointing team in the NFL. Chiefs at home, two and a half point, two and a half point favorites. I mean, this is a game where both teams coming off a loss in their last game. Both teams desperately need a win. The Chiefs to kind of continue their supremacy. Although if they're, they're a team, if they make the playoffs, like. They're still going to be favored to win every game. Take it on the Bills, who they just need to make the playoffs. They need a win. They need to win over a big team. The Bills kind of are like a shell of their former selves. Like, they've been different since. But the I, thing I is, they're, they're good enough with because injuries. they're close in all these games, and they fuck it up. Yeah, it's like— It's they, all self-inflicted wounds. It's almost like they've turned into the clutch level of the Chargers. Yeah, like this season. No, yeah, this season at the very least. Like I don't know if it's Josh Allen or. But if then it's... the Chargers said, "We'll see you one." Right. Let's go even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the like the good, the, but this has been a season where it seems like the teams that the very good teams last year were winning are the games where the very good teams last year were winning. This year, they're they're not. And that's the nature of the NFL. That's it's yeah, it such changes a, so competitive and it's so hard. It changes so much. You're not going to stay long at the top. Chiefs, of course, I, I, I think at this point they're currently ranked like third overall in the NFL. 
of course, are always an elite force with Patrick Mahomes, Travis, Travis Kelsey. I mean, no matter what, if they, like I said, if they make the playoffs, like they're a contention, they're a, they're a probably, money line favorite. I'm still for the picking Super Bowl. them in every game. Right. I agree. I think the Bills just haven't gotten back on track. I think both teams' defenses are, are pretty solid so far this season, but I think Kansas City holds through and gets the win. So I think the Bills, meaning, saying that this is a game they have to win, they know it's a game they have to win. They had a bye week. I think they're going to come out, probably have their best performance of the season. I got the Bills winning the game. I got the Bills going to 7-6. and six. So let's move on to the next matchup. It's an NF- a- AFC West matchup. I'm sorry. NFAFC. The 6-6 six and six Broncos coming off a loss after a huge winning streak. How can they respond? Taking on the, as we said, the least clutch team in the NFL, the San Diego, now LA Chargers. I know it's been like five years, but I still think San Diego Chargers. 5-7 and seven, the Chargers. Last week, though, coming off of a win, 6-0 to zero yeah, over like, the what pages. Is that? Dude, Mac Jones is so bad. I know we're not covering any of their games. Mac Jones is the worst. not covering the Patriots. Like that, that's, it's hard to find anything In to say about them. Two or three years they've gone from the dynasty to literally the worst team in the NFL. The Broncos, I don't know. If you're Russell Wilson, how do you go from winning five games in a row? So without the five-game winning streak, you would be one in six. Yeah, but I mean, that's like saying without half the season. Right. <laughs> I know, but I like saying it like that. <laughs> and also, f- you would say without... The one and six, we'd be five and zero. Oh. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. He threw four interceptions last week. Absolutely, absolutely Texans, abysmal. Texans did a great job getting to him. I just think this is going to come down to a game where, like, less than three hundred total I mean, passing it's gonna yards. A, it's going to be a Chargers game. I think it's less than three hundred total passing yards. Chargers are going to outgain the Broncos by hundred yards, but lose the game. I got the Broncos winning. I think the Chargers are going to win this game as much as I talk shit on their clutch level. It's going to be down to coaching. I think Sean Payne's a better coach than Brandon Staley. I think if it wasn't Sean Payton, this would be a, a battle for a coach's job. You know, this kind of this kind of game is like the turning point of this season. I mean, season. it's definitely a, Brandon Staley's third or fourth year, like, of doing he's about this. He's fired. Yeah. He, of doing this. Because this is one of... They have a this very is the worst. It has, he, they went, like, 10 and... But the thing is, they have a very talented roster. Like a thirteen and three one season, and it's just gone down and down and down ever, ever, every year since. They blew a twenty eight to zero lead in the playoffs last year, and, and nobody's then, giving them twenty eight to three Falcons shit in the Super Bowl. They're just letting them. Well, I mean, the Super Bowl is a whole different beast, right? But they're five and seven with a great team. All right, so now let's move on to the last football game. The main event. The main event. The best football game of the weekend. Probably NFC East matchup. As we said, the Bills-Chiefs probably preseason was game of the year. This might this, be game I was going to say, this might be the hottest matchup. Well, that besides we- last week when the Niners beat the shit out of the Eagles. Right. This is divisional rivals. Division this rivals. This is tight, though. Rivals. 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 NFC East matchup. This is one where the Cowboys. Darrell Revis? <laughs> the Cowboys can pull even if they win at 10 and 3. The 10 and 2 Eagles, 9 and 3 Cowboys. Dallas at home, where they're undefeated this season. Three and a half, Three point, and a half favorites. point favorites. They're usually dog shit at home. Not this season. Four straight wins total. Last week, Thanksgiving night. They. Last week? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Thanksgiving night. Beat the, Eagle, beat the Seahawks. Beat the Seahawks. Another bird team. Bird gang. Another bird. They beat them in a shootout. Taking on the Eagles coming off. They had a lot of close games, close wins leading up to this. They got the absolute dog piss beat out of them by the 49ers. Yeah, it was a bad, bad. It's a humbling, humbling game where how are the Eagles going to respond? Are they going to respond playing their best football? Or are they going to still kind of be a step back? Man, think, this is one of those games where I don't even want to watch. Just because it's like, as much as my dad's a Cowboys fan, I just know, I just can see what's going to happen to Dallas at home here. But I'm not. Everything's pointing to the Cowboys <laughs> winning this game. Right. And what happens every time everything points to the Cowboys winning this game? I'll tell you what, buddy. You just convinced me. I'm changing my pick. I picked the Cowboys. I've never thought about it till you said that. Right. This is an Eagles win all the way. Right. I am changing my own mind here. 
I never thought about it. Every time I've ever thought the Cowboys were going to win when a, in a matchup that was sided. When oh, an important game like this all points to you. The Cowboys fuck it Cowboys up. The Cowboys are going to fuck it up. Yeah. I, I don't want to do it, but I absolutely switch to the Eagles. I think... Same, brother. Same. I'm picking the Eagles. I Look, Dallas is top 10 in every category this season. It, it's... It's crazy how good they've done, how efficient they've been. Lucky they're not in the playoffs right now because the Eagles are going to walk back off of the San Francisco 49ers loss, and they are about to cripple the Dallas Cowboys this game. So we agree on that one. I never, are, I never expected that to happen. 